These are the descriptions given of the Mahdi from the Ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Before moving on, it is important that we discuss one more Hadith that might possibly refer to the Mahdi. And what makes this Hadith even more important is that it is reported in Bukhari and Muslim. And so as we said, there are very few Ahadith that are a reference to the Mahdi in Bukhari and Muslim, around 3-4 of them. And one of them is explicit when the Prophet ﷺ said your Imam will be amongst you. The others of them, even though clearly referred to him, they are not as explicit. So if this hadith is authentic, then it will be yet one more hadith in reference to the Mahdi. And the hadith in question is reported by Jabir ibn Samura, in which he narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يزال أمر الناس ماضياً ما وليهم إثنى عشر رجلا كلهم من قريش this affair of men, meaning Islam, shall continue to spread, shall continue to be as long as 12 men are in charge of them, all of them from the Quraysh. So this hadith states that there shall be 12 leaders from the tribe of Quraysh, all of whom will unite the Muslims and under whom the Muslims will have honor and glory. There are numerous interpretations to this hadith and Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar has a long discussion of it in his magnum opus entitled Fath al-Bari. However, there are two opinions that really and truly are weighty and these are the only ones we'll mention here. The first of these is that there shall be throughout the centuries of Islam 12 Khulafa who will really and truly rule justly and that Islam shall be strengthened by their rule. And so Islam will reach its glory and peak during the rule of these 12 Khulafa and they are separated by time and space. And this is the interpretation of Imam Abu Dawood and that is why he placed this hadith in the chapter regarding the Mahdi. And this is also the interpretation of Ibn Kathir, for he considers the last of these 12 to be the Mahdi himself. And this is why this hadith is mentioned in the series of talks that some ulama have claimed that the last of these 12 is the Mahdi. The second opinion that we'll mention, and in fact, to be honest, this is actually the stronger and the more accurate opinion, is that the Prophet Wasallam is predicting that Islam shall remain glorious and that it shall continue its expansion for the duration of 12 Khalifas. And after that, it shall not be at its peak. And this is the opinion of Ibn Hajar himself. And it is also the one that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah states. According to this interpretation, Islam will remain at its peak for the duration of 12 successive Khalifas. So let us see, did this happen? Yes, it did. The first four Khalifas, and then the reign of the primary rulers of the Umayyads, such as the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and others, until the time of Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. This would be the 12th leader from Quraysh. This is the time, according to these scholars, that the hadith refers to. They state that it was during this time that Islam really and truly spread from east to west, from Spain all the way to China. And it was also during this time that pretty much all of the famous scholars of all of the disciplines of Islam lived. And of course, it was the time of the Sahaba, Tabi'un, and Taba Tabi'un as well. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah writes after quoting this hadith that this matter shall remain firm as long as 12 leaders rule all of them from the Quraysh. He said, and this is exactly what happened. Because the Khulafa were Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum. And then after that, people took over whom all of the Muslims agreed upon. And they had power and glory. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Yazid, so, so far we're six. And then Abdul Malik, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. And then his four sons. Abdul Malik is one of the only Khalifas, in fact, the only Khalifa who had four sons, one after the other, who became the Khalifa after him. So these four sons make it 11. And between them was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a nephew to Abdul Malik. So he was a cousin to these four sons. So, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a ruler in between these four sons. After this, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah says, after this, the magnificence of, of the state started to decline until it has reached what it has reached. Because, Shaykh al-Islam says, the Umayyads, they controlled the entire earth of Islam, the entire lands of Islam. There was one Khilafah. There were not two Khilafahs in time of the Umayyads. This is the only time there was one ruler. And there was a rulership of power and dignity and the Khalifa was called by his name, Abdul Malik and Sulaiman. These were some of the names of the Khalifa. They didn't have these grand titles that Sheikh is saying. Adad al-Dawla, Izzuddin, Baha'uddin, Fulanuddin. Ibn Taymiyyah is saying they weren't known by these ridiculous titles. They were known by their names. And these were the people who would lead the prayers. And they would give the khutbas in the masajid. And they would sit in the masjid waiting for people to see them. And they didn't have bodyguards that prevented them from the masses. And so Sheikh Islam is praising 
the Umayyad dynasty. He then mentions some of the problems that the Umayyad dynasty had. And then he continues after mentioning some of these problems. He then said, and the reality is that the Umayyads, they controlled the entire Islamic kingdom. And they had all of the enemies of Islam in their power and grasp. And they had armies all over the world. They had an army in Andalus that was freeing Andalus and that was conquering for the Muslims. They had another army in the land of the Turks that was fighting the great Khan. The Khan was the name of the title of the king of Turks. And they had another army that was fighting the people in Egypt and another one fighting the people of Rome. And Islam was in Ziyadah and Quwa. Islam was growing and growing and it was more and more powerful and it had strength throughout the earth. So this does make sense is that if you look at it, there really were 12 Khalifas in the beginning of the Muslim Ummah whom the, the Muslim masses accepted and under whom Islam really and truly reached its peak and glory. And then after that, that is when the Khilafah broke up and other Khilafahs were formed and slowly but surely the Muslim Ummah declined bit by bit. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the Umayyads were completely perfect. They had their own problems, but relatively speaking, relatively speaking, the Umayyads were a very, very good dynasty in contrast to what has been said by them by many of the Orientalists and other recent historians, the fact of the matter is that the people they were ruling were Sahaba and Tabi'un and Taba Tabi'un. I mean, what greater blessing can that be that you have so many ulama and so many great people in your kingdom? And of course, as we said, this doesn't mean that they had no mistakes. They had their mistakes as well. Another question that comes to mind is, we know that the Mahdi shall rule for seven years. Will these seven years be before the coming of Isa such that as soon as Isa comes, the Mahdi dies? Or will they include some of the time of Isa as well? And has anything been narrated about the death of the Mahdi? The answers to these questions have not been given in any authentic hadith. So we cannot really state with certainty where and when the Mahdi will die. However, after the coming of Isa, we do know that there is no reference given to the Mahdi. Yet there are numerous hadith describing the events during the time of the Prophet Isa alayhi salam, such as his killing of the Tajjal, and the coming of Ya'juj and Ma'juj and the great battle that shall take place between the Muslims and the Bani Israel and other events. So it is possible to infer, and again only Allah knows for certain, that the Mahdi will rule these seven years before the coming of Isa and that he shall be on one of these expeditions that is fighting to fill the earth with justice when the Dajjal shall come down. And obviously, he will not be able to harm or kill the Dajjal. This is well known that nobody will be able to kill the Dajjal until Isa comes. So that is reserved for someone greater than the Mahdi. That is reserved for Isa ibn Maryam. So that the Dajjal will remain on this earth for, as we calculated out, one year and two and a half months. And then Allah will send down Isa ibn Maryam during his rule. And it shall be Isa who shall then lead the Muslims to kill the Dajjal. And with the coming of Isa, the Mahdi would have performed his task which is to guide the people to prepare the earth for the coming of Isa and to fill the earth with justice and with the fulfillment of his task, it is possible to opine that his duty has been done and therefore once his duty has been done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his soul and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows for certain, we cannot state so for certain whether these seven years will overlap or will they will come towards the end of time of the rule of Isa but it appears and Allah knows best that these seven years that the Mahdi will rule will be preceding the time of Isa and they shall finish these seven years immediately after Isa comes down.